selection. <sighs> Everybody, it's your girl Jay and I am here on week like 1062 of self-isolation and I'm sure I'm the same as a lot of people and we're just binging books right now so I thought that I would come on here and recommend some binge-worthy series for you all. I picked out seven series. A lot of them are on the lesser known side I would say but there are a couple that are kind of popular. The ones that are more popular did come out in like 2012 so you know it's time for a reread so without further ado let us get started. <sighs> So I'm gonna talk about the more like popular series now just to get them out of the way so that if you guys don't want to hear about them just like skip forward I guess. The first series that I have Netflix actually just picked up for a TV show so I figured it is about time for a reread so everyone can refresh their memories on what happens in this series but it is the selection series by Kier Cass. Selection, The Elite, and the one. I'm not even going to talk about the other books in this series because they were just not needed in my opinion so forget about them. But this is basically like The Bachelor in book form and it is just such a guilty pleasure read for me. You fly through the books so quickly. They're just a lot of fun. So I thought I would include them on my list even though they are pretty popular. The next series is another one that was popular when it first came out but since it's been out for so long I feel like again this needs to be a reread for a lot of people because it is just so binge worthy but it is the Winners Trilogy. This is by Mary Rutowski. She just released another book so I feel like everyone needs to reread her first series. I think it was her first series. I could be very wrong but these books oh my gosh when I read them I flew through them. This book follows 17 year old Kestrel who is the daughter of a general. She stumbles across a slave auction one day where a boy named Arden is being sold and it kind of starts this whole like revolution kind of plot line but I was so here for this. It is so addictive. The first book is The Winner's Curse, the second book is The Winner's Crime, and the last one is The Winner's Kiss. I personally think that the second book is the best in the series. It definitely does not suffer from like the second book syndrome. Kestrel was just such an interesting character to me. She is the daughter of a general, like I said, but she understands that her strengths are more mental than physical, which I found really interesting. It was really cool to see her like plan and strategize different things. So I just highly recommend recommend it. It also has one of like the best romances in my opinion. I think that the first one is a little bit slow so you do have to push through to get to the good action-y part of the second and third book but it's definitely a very bingeable series and I highly recommend it because it's very very addictive like I've said. The next series is my one horror thriller series that I have on this list. It is very hard to find horror thriller series because they just like don't exist for some reason. But it is the Jasper Dent series, the I Hunt Killers series. I don't know which one you want to call it, but I loved this series. Granted, I have only read the first two books. I need to read the third book. They are I Hunt Killers Game and Blood for My Blood. These are by Barry Liga. The series follows Jasper Dent, who is the son of the most notorious serial killer named Billy Dent. He killed 124 people before he was caught and thrown into jail. The people of his town are very suspicious of Jasper because they believe that, you know, like father like son. Jasper doesn't want to admit that he was being breeded by Billy to be his prodigy and it's kind of like the story of him trying to come to terms with the tendencies that he has and not wanting to have those tendencies, you know, that kind of thing. But it is so good. Jazz decides that he is going to prove people wrong and, you know, fight these tendencies by helping the police of his town find other serial killers. And it's just like really addictive. I actually have a full review of the first book, I Hunt Killers, that I did back when I first read this book and I just gush about the book. I gave it five out of five stars. I was very surprised by how much I enjoyed it. It's really interesting to see inside the mind of Jasper. You also get to hear a lot from Billy, which was really cool. I personally just really like serial killers and things to do with serial killers, which I know sounds really creepy, but I just find it very fascinating. This series also includes one of my favorite side characters of all time, Howie. He is Jasper's best friend and he is just hilarious, like the perfect comedic relief for this series. Definitely, definitely check it out if you haven't already. I think that it's one of the most underrated series I've personally read, so I really hope that if you take anything from this video, it's read this series. 
The next series, I don't know if I would call it a series because I think they're more companions, like they follow the same company of characters, but it's a separate story if that makes sense. They're also graphic novels. I thought I would throw something that's not like your typical formatted book because, you know, people don't only just like to read novels. They are the Adventure Zone graphic novels. This follows a Dungeons and Dragons style podcast that the McElroy brothers and their father have and it basically took those podcasts and turned them into graphic novels, but they are so funny. It follows the same three characters in each of them. There's actually a third one that was recently released or is about to be released. I'm not 100% sure which one is accurate on that statement, but the first one is Here There Be Goblins. The second one is Murder on the Rockport Limited. They follow the same cast of characters, like I said, but they're two different stories. It follows the three same characters, Taco the Elf Wizard, Merlin the Dwarf Cleric, and Magnus the Human Warrior. He is my absolute favorite. He is basically the human form of a golden retriever. I just love him so much, but, but these graphic novels are just such a fun time and you fly through them because they are just so funny and the characters are just so adorable and just like honestly relatable, which is weird because they're Dungeons and Dragons characters, but like you find a little bit of yourself in each of them and they're just, I love these graphic novels novels. I think they're definitely 100% one of my favorite graphic novels of all time. Which reminds me, if you guys want me to make a graphic novel video, because I have a lot of them, let me know because I kind of want to make one, but if it's not something you guys want to see, then I won't. Okay, the next series that I have definitely a very old series, and I would not say that it was necessarily a very good series, but Definitely bingeable, very addictive because you just want to keep reading because you're so confused about what is happening. It is the Burn for Burn trilogy by Jenny Han and Siobhan Vivian. First book is Burn for Burn, second book is Fire with Fire, and last one is Ashes to Ashes. And it's basically a high school revenge plotline with a little paranormal twist thrown in there, and it is just weird. Honestly, I went into this thinking that it was one thing and then by the third book It is something completely different that you just do not expect when reading the first book So it was just a very interesting ride. It was like a roller coaster. I read these back in like 2016 so honestly You know, they might not be that good of a book But from what I remember in my little how old was I in 2016? 24 minus I can't do that math, I'm dyscalculic, but I was younger. But it is just like one of those series that took me by surprise because it wasn't what I expected, so if that's something you're into, read it. I'm not saying it's good, but it was a wild okay. ride. Okay, so the next series that I have are a little bit controversial on booktube, but I will put the disclaimer, you know, I understand people's opinions and how they feel about the book, but I personally really enjoyed them. Moving on. It is the Black Witch Chronicles by Lori Forrest. Like I said, controversy. We're moving past that. I was very surprised with because I didn't think that I was going to like them as much as I did. The first book is The Black Witch. Second book is The Iron Flower. She's actually coming out with the third book sometime in 2020. At least that's what I was told. The book series follows Ellerin Gardner, who is the descendant of Carnissa Gardner, who is the Black Witch, the most powerful witch in all the realm. For her death, she defeated the evil ones in the realm war. Ellerin is the spitting image of her grandmother, but she is unable to harness any of the magic that her grandmother was able to Ellerin is given the opportunity to go to a magical university with her two brothers, which is supposed to help her harness this magic that she doesn't possess. Her aunt Vivian is trying to get her wand fasted to a very influential mage named Lucas Gray. Ellerin doesn't want to be wand fasted because she is a strong, independent woman who don't need no man, and so her aunt decides that she's going to make her life a little bit hectic, a little bit rough, until she agrees. Fallon Bane is a level 5 mage who is in love with Lucas, and so she automatically does does not like Ellerin, so she is also making Ellerin's life a little bit difficult while she's at this university. While attending this university, Ellerin quickly realizes that there are a lot of different races attending as well, and as she spends more time with these different races, she realizes that there are a lot of prejudices that she once believed that she now is beginning to change her ways, and it's like the story of that. So. I think that this book is a lot more complex than I originally thought going into it. There are so many things that you need to keep track of, the different races, the different characters in general, and what race they belong to, and what prejudices each race has against each other. It is a lot, but 
it was really entertaining, which I didn't expect. I went into it with very low expectations because of all the controversy that was surrounding it. But I highly, highly recommend everybody reads it for themselves because it's actually really addictive. And I sped through the first book, which like is a chonker. And I sped through the second book and it is also a chonker. And I'm actually really looking forward to the third book. If you guys are interested in like my full thoughts on these books because I do have a lot of them then let me know down below and I'll make the review but I know that's a really controversial series but personally I really liked it. And then the final series that I have to talk about I've only read the first two books. I've heard that the third book kind of goes downhill but it is a, the Themes Files, Thymes Files. I'm not 100% sure how to say it. They consist of Sleeping Giants, Waking Gods, and then the third book is Only Human I believe but these are by Sylvain Nouvelle and this basically follows a scientist named Rose who when she was a little girl she fell into a hole while biking. She ends up falling onto a giant robot hand and then years later she is assigned as like the head scientist of trying to discover what this giant robot does, where it came from, you know, that kind of thing. And I listened to these books on audio. Highly, highly recommend you do that if you are going to pick these up. They're told in interview format, kind of like Daisy Jones but like science-y and it also has like journal entries from the different people in this corporation. The audio version that I listened to was a full cast audio so it was just really interesting to see how the voice actors interacted with each other and portrayed their characters. I think that it gave a lot of personality to the characters that you wouldn't get if you were to just read it physically so I definitely recommend listening to it on audio because I think that it made it a lot more fun. I threw through these books in one day, like both of them in the same day because I just needed to know what was going to happen next. The first book leaves you off on such a cliffhanger that you need to immediately pick up the second book. The second book was good but I don't think it was as addictive as the first one. Like I don't feel the need to go pick up the third book but like I said definitely listen to this one on audio. Alright everybody so that was my binge worthy series video. Um, Let me know down below if you've read any of these books, what you thought of them. Let me know if you want another binge worthy series because that's apparently what I'm into right now is just binging series so I'm sure I could come up with another one if y'all are interested and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!